Welcome everybody to Tech Topics. So today we're going to be talking about productivity apps. So when I first started writing this program, I immediately went to, oh, let's talk about all the new, the newest productivity apps that are out there. But then I took a step back and I was like, well, let's focus on things that you may already have and focus on why productivity apps matter in the first place. So now that we have that foundation, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my webcam and we're gonna go ahead and dive on into what our topic is today. So as you guys all know, we always kick off our um, programs with a book or resource shout out. Today I have a book. So this is a book that was very helpful to me. It's one that I read a few years ago. It's called Getting Things Done. The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. It is available in a bunch of different formats. So if you prefer the ebook format, it's available on Libby Overdrive. It's also available as an audiobook on Libby by Overdrive. And you can check it out as a physical book. So if you're looking at ways to make your life a little bit more productive, I could definitely recommend this book. It was very helpful to me. So what are productivity apps? So very simply speaking, these are apps that make work and personal tasks easier. So a lot of people, at least me, definitely, when I was first researching and thinking about apps that help me in productivity, you always want to go to those big name productivity work-based apps like Trello, Teams, and things like that. And those apps are very, very important, but really you need the the main focus of productivity apps are just to make your life just a little bit easier. So these are apps like list apps, banking apps, calendar apps. Um, again, like I just mentioned, some workplace apps. So I know that our um, workplace um, here um, with the library system, we use Teams a lot. We use them to message each other, to schedule meetings. It's a very important app to us. So um, also they can be considered like focusing apps. So if you spend too much time on your phone, there are apps out there that'll like ping messages to you saying, you know, get off this app or stuff like that. So why should why does why does this matter why should you even know about them like how is this important to you they help automate automate and simplify daily tasks so these are just going to make your life again just making your life a little bit easier so um for me the way that i use productivity apps are to save me time and to save my sanity so things that drive me crazy things that i can just put into an app these apps are very important to me so um for example um, I'm going to talk a little bit later about how I use Google Keep. This is an app that I use, basically call a virtual junk drawer. So I use it to make to-do lists. I use it to save pictures. I use it to save links. It's just basically a virtual junk drawer. So a little bit about how this session is going to work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at apps that you already have on your devices. So these are a lot of the built-in apps that are already there, how to optimize those, how to help make you more productive. And I'm also going to explore some suggestions for productivity apps. So remember that definition I gave you earlier about like, the apps that make per work and personal lives easier. So keep that feather in your cap as we go along with what we have to talk about. So optimizing the apps that you already have. This is a big one here. Clean up your email inbox. So I don't know about your email inbox, but mine before I started cleaning it up was nuts. Because you get emails for everything. You get important emails for like doctor visits, for things, important documents you need to sign, um, things like that. And you also get those spammy emails. So you probably get like Walgreens emails, Target emails, things that don't really matter. So to make your life easier, set rules. So what are rules? So rules and emails are ways of filtering certain messages in the inbox using keywords. So for example, if you wanna keep those Target emails, you can set up a rule that'll automatically filter Target emails into a certain folder. Speaking of folders, make sure that you are using folders. So you can have one for medical appointments. You can have one for coupons. You can have one for, you know, appointments, for like fun appointments, for restaurant reservations. Definitely set up folders to make your life easier. And this is another huge one that has saved me a lot of time of having to scroll through things. Unsubscribe from email lists that you're not using. So if you signed up to get like a free coupon or you signed up for a store and maybe a city you don't live in anymore, unsubscribe from it. That way you can stop getting those emails and they can stop you know, um, filling up your inbox. Use your calendar app to manage appointments, 
work hours and events. So I have, I use Google Calendar and I color code my work stuff and my personal stuff. And my, I'm also in school, so my school stuff too. So at a glance, I can look at my calendar and I can see what's a work appointment, what's a school appointment, and what's a personal appointment. So these are apps, again, every, uh, if you have a, a smartphone or a tablet, you have an email, you have an email app. If you had, same thing, you have a calendar app. So you can use these apps that you already have to just make things easier. So with that calendar app, um, I also put in my appointments. With the calendar apps, the, you can set up the appointments to send you reminders. So you'll have a reminder that you can have pop up 30 minutes or an hour before you're supposed to leave for that appointment. So you know, oh, I need to go leave for that appointment. And it's also just nice to be able to look at your calendar at a glance and be able to see, oh, okay, I got a work thing at two o'clock or, oh, I got a personal appointment at four o'clock. Um, use a cloud-based service to sync calendars and manage important files. This is very important for work and school. So our work, school, or personal. So for instance, um, for my school stuff, if I want to do homework on my lunch break at work, I don't have to haul my laptop, my personal laptop into the office. I can have my just my iPad. So I use uh, the Apple Drive app and I can have journal articles that I need to read, assignments that I need to look at on that app that I can bring up on my, on my tablet, on my iPad, and I can bring up on my computer. So that way I don't have to haul it around. It's saved up to the cloud so I can access it from anywhere. Use a password manager. So I, we all have tons of apps, tons of websites, tons of things that we have to sign into. Um, A tech topics video on the channel about password managers. So you want to learn a little bit about how those work. Um, you can check that out. But using a password manager just makes it easier for you to log into the things that you need. And last but not least, organize your apps. So depending on the smartphone or the tablet that you have, there's a way for you to organize your apps so that you can find them quickly at a glance. So you're not having to scroll through several pages of apps to find the ones you need. For example, with me, I save all of my apps. I organize them by topic. So I have like finance, financial apps. I have food apps. I have, you know, cal you know, calendar productivity apps. I organize them so I can see at a glance, social media apps. I organize them so I can see at a glance, okay, I want to go on Instagram. I can just tap on my social media folder and pull up those apps. So productivity app suggestions. So like I said before, Productivity apps are basically just apps that make your life easier. So um, I'm just gonna talk about a few of them. You can just scroll, you can take a look at the apps that I have here because of time. Um, I am a big fan of Google Keep. Like I said before, Google Keep is kind of like my virtual junk drawer so I can save random links. So it's like, oh, I wanna go back and see that later. It's awesome. Um, I can also make, this is also big, when I'm making grocery lists, I can do checklists. So if I need to go to the grocery store, I need to go to another store, I can make checklists um, that are easy for me to check things off as I get them. Um, baking and finance apps, um, I found, and a lot of people I talked to found that the websites are a little bit clunky, but the um, apps are very clean. So if you need to look at your banking or your credit card balance at a glance, if you wanna see how many points you have on your credit card, these are just gonna make your big things go a little bit um, easier. If you want to make your budgeting a little bit more seamless, I also gave some suggestions for budgeting apps as well. Um, that way you could just look at your budget at a glance and see what's going on with it. Um, for daily or weekly tasks, um, grocery store and big box apps. So um, I found that the Publix app, for example, I like to shop based on what's on sale. And the Publix app makes that very easy for me to do because you can look at the weekly ad, you can add them to your list. And you can, when I go to Publix, I can just look at my list. It tells you what aisle it's in. It just makes grocery shopping like very, very simple. Also Waze and Google Maps. So I'm back in the office now. Um, I have to you know, travel to work every day and the Waze app allows me, it will route my, um, trip to work based on traffic conditions. So I don't have to like hope, you know, fingers crossed, or I hope there's no traffic. It'll route me automatically. It'll find me the fastest route to get to work so I can make sure I work on time. 
um, some miscellaneous apps. So there's the Google Suite. I like the Google Suite because it is works seamlessly across several devices. So for example, I have to use PC products for work and I own, I personally own Apple products, but I can use the Google Suite to manage certain things because it's a cloud-based system that I can pull up on any device. It's not proprietary to Android, Apple, or PC devices. And this is kind of more of a practical on weather apps. Um, like if you like to take walks in the afternoon, as we know, it's raining every single afternoon. So these apps just, um, you can look on AccuWeather, for example, and they say, oh, it's raining in 15 minutes. Okay, well, let me wait to go take that walk. So these are just apps there that make your life a little bit easier. And now that I have covered these, I am going to turn my camera back on and I'm going to invite Chris on for questions. Let's see if there are any questions from the audience. All right. That was great. Yes, now is the time for questions. So please feel free to post them in the question section. And we have time for a few, so feel free to do that. All right, let's see. Someone is asking, um, I know that some of these apps are free or they offer free versions, which, which is better? Obviously, probably the paid version, but can you say, are the free ones just as effective or would you recommend paid ones? So the free ones for productivity apps are very effective. It really depends on how much you want to use them. So when you go, when you uh, think of work productivity apps, those are going to be paid for by your job anyway. So like Teams isn't free, but like we don't have to pay for it because our job pays for it. So those are a little different. If you're thinking about personal productivity apps, I would definitely start with the free ones or the free mm -hmm. version. So for instance, I gave Evernote because it just keeps on. I have several friends that use it. It pops up on like every Google search that you do for productivity apps. And I know that they offer a free one and then you can upgrade, you can pay for it. So try the free one. And if you feel like the paid version is gonna be more useful to you, then go that. But there are tons of free productivity apps. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good tip. Try it out first before purchasing. All right, so someone wants to know, uh, can you recommend a specific weather app? So um, I am a fan of AccuWeather. Um, I like it because it gives you the prediction and let me emphasize the word prediction, but it will predict when rain is supposed to start or when bad weather is supposed to start close to your area. So I like that one so I can see, oh, rain expected in, you know, 30 minutes. So like if I do want to take a walk, if I do want to go to a park or something, I can see and be like, oh, OK, well, this isn't going to be a really good time. And of course, it has the other basic weather stuff. So you can see the chances of rain, like sun, what's the weather going to be like? So that's my um, favorite one. But I mean, all of them kind of do the same thing. It's just the one that I've been using for a while now. All right. We have time for one more question. Uh, someone is asking if um, a lot of the productivity apps that are out there, or the popular ones, are they com compatible with, uh, the, I guess, like Alexa and like Siri, some of those home devices? Do you know? It depends. Um, so, for instance, I mentioned apps for big box stores. I mm -hmm. consider Amazon, well, the Amazon is definitely a big box store. So obviously, if you're going to ask Alexa to order you something on Amazon, you will be able to order that thing on Amazon. <laughs> um, that's a little dangerous, I think, because, you know, that Prime, you get it next day. Mm, don't know about that. But yeah. um, some do. Um, it really, it really depends, though, like, because there's so many apps and so many different things. So you would just definitely have to see the specs and see, because, you know, Google, hey, Google, hey, Siri, like, so it really, really mm -hmm. depends. So I know, right. for instance, again, I'm an Apple girl. If I say, hey, Siri, um, set an appointment tomorrow at the dentist, like, it's going to do that for me. So it really okay. depends on your device, but a lot of devices have that built-in capability. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, it looks like that's all we, the time we have for questions and all the time we have for this program. What a great program. There's lots of information there. Those productivity apps are, there's so many now and they're very useful because they can help you plan out time. And so you have free time, right? That's the whole goal. All right. So um, if you want to contact the library, you can contact us at HCPLC org slash contact it's here on the screen also if you go to our website you can see our events calendar and you can also visit the tech topics landing page at hcplc.org slash tech topics 
And next week, our topic is Discord, which I'm not too familiar with, so perhaps I should register for that session, huh? <laughs> I'm going to learn a lot next week, Chris. Uh, I'm not very familiar with it either. So we, so, the person that um, is teaching it knows a lot about it. So you will learn a little bit about how that works. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, Tunisia. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Have a great evening, everybody. Bye, Bye. now.